which is asked in the computer science paper. Now, this is a huge chapter of consisting of data structures and algorithms, designing of algorithms. So this data structures is an extremely important part as far as the computer science curriculum is concerned. This is the main thing which a computer science student should know. How a particular problem can be solved. Now today we are living in the world of petabytes. Every day Facebook, Google is processing so much of data. So they need efficient algorithm to do any type of searching or sorting or to implement any particular need of the, pro of the pro program. So what is needed is that we compute everything faster. So what is needed is that we have, we should have some efficient algorithm whose time complexity is less and which runs in a faster manner. And also the space complexity is important nowadays. Now there is, you must be, you might have heard very famous nowadays is Android. Android operating system, what it does, it is very famous nowadays growing at a very fast rate. But it is an after all an operating system which is there in a mobile. So mobile phone or if you take any embedded device, any other chip, right from working uh, work the microwave oven or any other thing, it is basically a computer program written inside it. So that there is a constraint on the memory. Like if you have Google, they don't have the constraint much of memory because they have huge data servers. But if you take this embedded device, then there is a constraint of the memory that uh, the memory available is less. Thus, we need to save space as well. Now, there will be cases where if you go to save the space, the time will increase. And if you go to save the time, the space will increase. So, there is always a trade-off, you know, between the space and the time. And we need to choose the one which suits the application. And sometimes by smarter design and smarter application, we will have the saving of both time and space. So, if you see recently, all the computer scientists are involved in publication, publication of so many papers, which are published based on various algorithms and various fields. So this is a field of computer science which must be very thoroughly you known and it is used in every other field. If you take computer networks, you will find all the recent research papers which are published, they will be taking some technique and they will be optimizing the technique and designing some better algorithm and, and publish a paper. So everything, if you use, if you think of networks, if you think of operating system, if you think of parallel computing, cloud computing, grid computing, or any other image processing, it is all nothing but it is designing of algorithms. Because the software can be built once you have the algorithm ready. And coding can be done by any person, but what is the main part is designing algorithm. And to design that a particular algorithm, what data structure should you use? For example, if you want to do something, it might happen that using this algorithm and this data structure, it takes this much time. But if I use the same algorithm, but if I cleverly implement it, this is where implementation comes into the picture. And implementation means if I cleverly implement it by using some smarter data structure, then I may save my time as well, and I may save my space. So this is all at a very higher level, at a very, uh, uh, the, grass, uh, the entire the scenario of the algorithms and this. So this is a step-by-step -step process, it does not come next, it does not come all of a sudden. So first year, as far as the gate exam is concerned, you sometimes, you know, many, in most of the papers, every paper, there will be one or two questions on some C language, C programming language. Mostly there will be a program based on the recursion. Recursion is very important. And all these things must be known to everyone. Of course, I have not written structures there. But all these things are very basic things which must be known to any computer scientist or any computer engineer, not only for the gate exam, but in general also, even if we go in the any company, all these things will be needed. And as far as C language is concerned, yes, the creator of the C is Dennis Ritchie, and C language is used till today, and it will be, it will not become absolute, it will be continued to be used years to come. It is not that Java or VPNet or .NET or any other C sharp anything will replace C. That will never be, that is never going to happen. C has its own advantage and it is being used since time invariant since it is invented. And so one important thing which I want I also want to tell is that uh, as a student we we have competition or we think that oh look I know only C C plus plus Java or look I know this particular set of the language. But what I want to tell and I want to suggest is that which language you do know is not important. It is immaterial whether you know C, C++, Java, .NET, has VBstar, whatever. 
it only thing which matters is the logic which you should develop any language can be learned in one or two days or at the max one week if you put sincere efforts because what you need to learn is only the syntax which differs from language to language but if you if i ask you to write a program say sorting program then the logic remains the same whether you sort it in c whether you sort it in python whether you sort it in java whether you sort it in vb the logic is always going to remain same yeah that is a different issue that in suppose in python you may sort all the numbers just by writing one function sort which is an inbuilt function in the python library which java does not which c does not have but that is an altogether different issue which is a simple issue but the main thing is that the logic which you develop which you think how you will write the code in how will you program your uh, uh, how will you write your program and all these things are very much important rather than only seeing what program should be written okay so now let us get started out with some basics of c of course the first thing which i want to cover is loops any person will know this properly now it is an overview lecture and i am not going to explain it in much detail uh gate syllabus is a vast syllabus and also it is uh, assumed that most of the things will be known so it is just like you can think that this will be like a recapitulated class but then we will solve lots of problems all all the gate problems which are asked in the previous years based on the uh, based on all the questions which are asked in the gate papers so you will get an idea of what are the kind of the questions which are asked in gate okay so loops whenever we think whenever we think of loop the, the what comes to our mind first thing is a for loop now first of all what is a loop why we use it loop is very essential and very hard any program will always almost contain a loop and loop what it does it tells you the if you, if you want to do any task repetitively then you use loop perhaps and loop is also used to estimate the time which it will take to run the program so generally what happens is that you have your program okay you have run program so let's say this is the starting of the program name and this is your program where it ends each of the line usually exit is if there is a statement say print if statement or if there is an if statement or if there is some another statement here say assignment statement x is equal to something all this step it is assumed that it takes one time one unit of time the step which takes more time is the loop step suppose if i do this loop n number of times let's say I start with i equal to 0 and i go up till i is less than n then this step each of this step will be executed n times if i have a loop inside a loop and this is also executed n times then for each of this outer loop this inner loop will be executed n times so for each n one for each i it takes n times to run the inner loop so for all this in outer loop it will take n square amount of time to run the entire loop so this it is the for loop which determines how much time a program will take in terms of the input size and that this n is nothing but it is this input size data suppose if you want to sort n numbers you if you use this two for loops in this manner one inside the another and each and each for loop executes n times then the complexity will be n square because it will take n square amount of steps to execute this many four lines right so in a way these loops are important because it helps to estimate the number of times or the number of steps a program will take to run so what is a for loop like for loop should contain two semicolons and what is here is initialization what is here is the condition to execute the loop and what is here is increment decrement or any other operator which you would like to so what happens is that this is how the typically a for loop works initially when a statement when the compiler reads for it does all the initialization which is written here 
once it does that it checks whether the condition is true or not if condition is not true then it will if the condition is false then it will execute this statement once it reaches here it will execute this statement so from here it goes here and once it executes this statement then it will check whether the condition is true or false and if the condition is false again then it will continue the same cycle it will execute this then after executing this it will execute this and after executing this it will again check whether the condition is true or false if the condition is false again again this cycle will continue once this condition becomes true what will happen is that from here it will come to the next statement here which was written after the loop was closed so this is how typically working takes place of a loop so next is that suppose let's say i have this many initializations so there can be multiple statements but each must be separated by a comma there must be only two semicolons inside the for loop this now it may happen that there is no condition it is absolutely okay to leave one two or all the three to be blank then in order that program terminates there must be some break statement or some exit statement at least there must be at least one break or at least one exit statement such that the program will terminate otherwise the program will never terminate if there is no condition here and if there is no thing here then it will go on simply executing these steps again and again again and again again and again again and again because there is nothing condition is specified here so this you should take care that if you don't write condition then there is at least some break or exit statement inside the loop multiple initializations and multiple increment decrement operations can also be performed so i can initialize many things together as i did last time but i can also do incrementation decrementation of the many operators simultaneously this is also allowed and all this statement will be executed in order so next is the while loop which is also used commonly so what is the while loop structure while condition and the so this will be executed until the condition is true this there will be some statements here which will go on and getting executed once this until this condition becomes true then it will come back here and once the condition is false it will go on executing this it will go on and on inside this loop and the next thing is the do while loop which is used do then the statements and then we write while and then we write the condition and then we put a semicolon and here is the condition so it is just like why but the condition comes in the end what happens in the while loop is first when it sees while it sees the condition it tests whether the condition is true or false if the condition is false it will execute this but if the condition was true it will directly come here and execute the next statement but what does it do while do is that when it sees do it simply executes this statement after executing it it will check whether the condition is true or false if the condition is false it will again execute this statement and if the condition becomes true then it will start with the next line of execution this is what happens is in do while loop whereas in while it first checks the condition and then executes for the first step so when can a do while loop be useful is that if we want a certain part to be executed at least once we we, we can use do while what do while assures is that this loop will be executed at least once because the condition is checked after only completing one round of the pass then here let us also see some operators and some other things 
some other uh, constructs like if else, if then else, ladder. The operator which I want to talk about is the decision operator, also called as the ternary operator. It is exactly similar like if else statement, but it is only the way of writing it is different than the if else statement. Typically, what is an if else statement will look like? If there is certain condition to be executed, then we will, it will execute this, else it will execute this. So if a condition is true, it will execute this statement and then jump the control to here. And if the condition is false, it will skip all this and execute this statement. This is what is a normal if else statement which everyone knows. If you want to have many conditions inside it, then you can simply use if condition then you can do nested thing ins inside else inside if let's say that this if gets closed here inside if you can have if inside and then you can have else so this is called a nested loop inside if you have if and inside inside if you have what if else and in the else part also you can have if else Inside if also you can have another if. So this is two level of else, else. So this is three levels of the hierarchy of the nested loops. So you can always have this, but this. And uh, you have other options as well. You can have nest, this was the nested if else loop which I just now showed. You can also have if statement, and then you can have else if condition. And then you can have again else if condition, and at the end you can have this any number of times you want until and unless you have any more and more conditions to be filled. And then at the end you have else without condition, and then this. So what does this do is that if the, if if the condition is true, it will execute this, and it will come back here after the else statement. If the condition is false, then it will check whether this condition is true. If this condition is true, it will execute this and come back after the else statement gets over here. If this condition is also false, it will check in this else if, if this condition is true and it will execute these statements and then come back here. And if all these conditions are false, then it will execute this else loop, this statement of the else statement which is there and then it will continue from here. So this is just what is the normal if else which everyone knows. And this was if else if loop, which was there. So now I want to speak about the ternary operator, which is the decision operator, which is similar like if else statement. 